Tonight I'll be unpacking and setting up a new telescope by Skywatcher. It's called the StarQuest 102R. I've uh, really missed owning a refractor. I think that they're my favourite type of telescope. It's got some weight to it actually. It feels like there's a lot of metal there, which is, I like that. I don't like telescopes to be too plasticky. So let's have a look at the lens on this thing. Oh yeah, it's got some nice coatings on it. What these cheaper refractors can suffer from, as well as the chromatic aberration, where you get like a kind of purple halo around bright objects, they also tend to be either sort of over or under corrected with something called spherical aberration. So what I've done is I bought a, a special eyepiece called a Gerd Newman Ronchi eyepiece, and I can use that to actually examine the optics and see if they're any good or not. So I'll do a video on that as well. We've got a diameter of 102 millimeters for the objective lens and a focal length of 500 millimeters. That works out as f4.9, so it's really quite a fast optic, so good for low power, wide views of the sky when you're observing, like star clusters, nebulae, galaxies if the sky is dark enough, and Things like moon and planets, if you if you keep the magnification low, I think it'll be fine. So these are all the accessories by the looks of it. <laughs> I've got quite a, a number of these now. <laughs> so these are the Super 25 and Super 10 eyepieces that come with every Skywatcher en entry telescope. So we've got a mirror diagonal. We've got an RDF or red dot finder. And we've got some slow mo controls for the mount when I unbox that in a moment counterweight shaft and that's what we got that's really heavy so I'm gonna guess that is the counterweights to go with this there we go this must be the mount head it's the only thing left from box. Other than the motor that I ordered, I thought maybe that's not been shipped yet. I think we'll just go ahead and put this puppy together. It's only when you extend these tripod legs you kind of see how kind of flimsy this is. But tripods always something that can be upgraded. So it's not, it's not a worry at all. That is so light. It's quite tall though. I'm 5'11 and it's up to my chest. So by the time we got a mount on there, you kind of need a tall tripod with a, with a refractor as well because when you're looking up towards Zenith, the eyepiece is going to be down here somewhere. So a tall, nice tall tripod is going to make that a bit more comfortable to use. Let's get that mount header board. It's just hanging out with the fruit over there. Oh yeah, I remember these, the scale on this is a little bit confusing. So we've got zero, I mean it goes from zero straight to 15, 30, 45. So it's difficult to find 52, because that's 15. So hold on. Let's go for that. Let's get the counterweight bar. The idea of this is it just counters the weight of the telescope around this axis, the right ascension axis. And this is the axis that rotates with the Earth. This little bit here is pointing towards the pole star Polaris. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, it's a little bit more complicated in the Southern Hemisphere, but those guys down there know how to do it. Let's get this weight on. That is. I'm gonna to have to put that right at the top so it doesn't put too much pressure on it until I get the scope on board. Come on, here we go. What a beast. There we go. Telescope time, I think. Ooh. You know what? I kinda of need this to point the other way. <laughs> Yeah, the cat weights going where that leg is. I'm being stupid.
the obligatory do not point your telescope at the sun tag. It's well and truly wound around that. Let's get that off somehow. That's stuck in there. How the hell? Oh. Let's cut it. Goodness for that. Let's pop her aboard. Undo the declination clutch. We need to balance that. I'm going to put the diagonal in there and the the RDF on. Else we're balancing it for no reason because we'll have to balance it again once we add those on if we don't do that now. stick an eyepiece in there as well and then we've got the rough kind of typical load for balancing this is a very light eyepiece so. look at those vibrations oh no stop complaining entry level right let's see how that balances Ooh. Yeah, a little bit heavy, although it's going to have a heavy ride. Oh, red dot finder, that's fine. Uh, pull the tab out, activate the battery. Let's turn it on, have a look. Yeah, you can see a red dot there, I don't know if you can see that. Anyway, it does work, trust me. Once this is on there, you can adjust it left, right, up and down using that and that. So you can line this up with the optics of the main telescope. And we'll be doing that. I kind of explain this in a lot of my unboxing videos, but if you're watching this for the first time, thinking about getting a telescope, you kind of need to know it. So I don't mind going over it again. It's all good. Let's point it up, make it look cool. Let's put the slow motion controls on there as well. And then we can polar align it and then use these to track the sky. I'm looking forward to this. So long since I've had a refractor. Should we have that on the same side? Really? I'm right-handed, aren't I? I'm going to put them on the other side. <laughs> Still learning, clearly. But it's personal preference. You can have one one side, one the other side. This mount gives you that option, really. It's quite good like that. What else is there? I'm probably missing something, other than the inevitable waiting for the motor drive to attach to this. Oh yeah, that's balanced the right ascension as well, while we're at it. That'll do. Panic over, we found the motor drive. It was uh, behind my wife's boots near the front door, so we can now install that. I've unboxed it clearly. Um, surprisingly, it's got, I didn't realize this, but it's got an auto guider port. So if you can imagine auto guiding with this, well, the way it's got to be done, hasn't it? We've got to give that a go. And this bracket appears to sort of fit on here. And this little bit goes through there and then turns to track the sky. A northern and southern hemisphere switch there as well. So I'm going to put that on the northern hemisphere for where I am. Uh, batteries. Looks like it takes two AAs. I can hear it. Can you hear that? Turn that off for a minute though. Got to get that on. So to loosen it, it looks like you undo that and put it on there somehow. Ooh, might have to undo that little worm screw. It comes with some Allen keys, so you don't need to 
mess about in your toolbox finding the right stuff to put this on. It comes, looks like it comes with what you need. Turn clutch wheel A upwards to free rotation, shaft coupling. Need some shaft coupling, that's what we need. Let me just do what I think it needs to work. It's interesting. Oh, it's on like a little spring, isn't it? So it can move about. It's going to move with any sort of wonkiness. So we're locking that down and locking the clutch and putting the switch on. Hopefully that's going to turn the RA axis and we can track the sky. That'd be awesome. If we want to move it, we can just disengage the clutch. We've got to go outside with this and have a look. Pretty excited. Refractor again. Have a look at that lens. Yeah, yeah. I'm hoping you can see on camera okay. So I'm pointing at Venus over there. Hopefully it's still tracking through the eyepiece. It is. I've only done a quick rough polar alignment with Polaris. Just really, I can see that it's not even <laughs> properly pointing towards Polaris and it's still, it's still tracking okay. So high hopes for this. Let's put the 20 mil, the 15 mil plus in and have a look. See how Venus looks with that. I've already aligned the red dot finder with the main telescope. I might put the uh, webcam on. But that's a lovely phase. It's a lovely phase. It seems quite sharp. That's not bad at all. Beautiful phase of Venus. It seems to be tracking pretty nicely. You know what? I'm just wondering if we can capture a few frames. I did buy another thing. I bought a second hand ZWASI 120mm Mini. Should we go for it? It's about to set Venus. I reckon we can grab some frames. This is the ZWO ASI 120mm Mini that I picked up. I'm not sure if I need that nose piece or not. But I've been using that webcam for a year and a half. I'm hoping this will be quite a significant upgrade. that just fit in like an eyepiece. It's quite cool. I downloaded the drivers for this earlier, so hopefully it all works nicely with sharp cap. Let's find the camera. ZWA. That's the one. Oh yeah. You seeing that? Just need to focus it. Maybe turn the exposure time down a bit. I'm going to lift this laptop up here so I can get close to the focuser. See what I can... Oh, there. It was just out of focus. There we go. I have got a focus mask upstairs. That would make life easier. You stay guard. Put this focus mask on here. I've really put the gain up. The exposure time. We can see some spikes. So we can focus that nicely now. That looks pretty good. Let's capture some of that. 
Yeah, 800. It's a very fine crescent for Venus at the moment. It's just nice to have a mount that actually tracks the sky. <laughs> it's like working well enough to image the planets at least. I don't know what it will do for anything else. It's as good as I can get focus with it being so... It's... Oh god, it's literally... It's literally skimming, skimming the rooftop. Actually, at the height of the telescope, it's got half the roof of that house in it. So the, I, I can't really vouch for the quality of that. I'll try again when it's higher in the sky, but... I'm still going to try and stack it later. See what we what we get. Where's my eyepiece gone? Yeah, it's guarding the it's guarding the eyepieces. It's doing a really good job. <laughs> Venus is just on that rooftop. Okay. Venus is just hovering above that rooftop. Oh, it's got it's kind of gone now. It's a bit hazy though. Yeah, it's it's rubbish. I'm literally a few. I'm literally looking into a street light. Mm. But even so, you can see the the street light through the eyepiece. Have a look and Venus. Can you see the crescent of Venus? Yeah. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, there's a bit of purple fringing with it being a cheap... Don't have me in the video. It looks like a finger. I won't have you in the video much. I've actually got the street light and Venus in the same field of view. Okay, I've just come back inside and I've had quite a successful night, I think. I've even managed to image the Ring Nebula with a ZWOSI 120mm, which is kind of like, I don't know why I'm pointing there for, that's where it was. Um, but anyway, that's a planetary camera and a guide cam. So yeah, I didn't expect to be able to image the Ring Nebula. I've used the live stacking feature in SharpCap so it was kind of like EAA kind of imaging, electronic um, aided astronomy rather than actual proper imaging, but I got a really clear picture of the Ring Nebula. Something quite special about using a refractor. Not much went wrong tonight, and it's nice when you get a night like that when a lot of things go right. It's a pretty basic thing really, um, but it all worked. And it, it worked for something that I wouldn't expect it to do. I mean, if you want professional results, you definitely need an APO or, or an astrograph of some kind, but I don't see anything wrong with sort of like messing about with this for a bit of basic deep sky. I'm going to see what else I can do with it. If you want to join me and see what else we can do with this telescope, please hit that subscribe button and hit the like if you like this video. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.